Henry Cheatham here. And I have two guests here on my program today, and we're going to talk about music, American music, American folk music, music that we, uh, some anyway, call blues. And my guest today is uh, Mr. Roy, uh, forgive me, yeah. Doc, Root Doctor, no, the Root Doctor yeah. music. Yeah, Dr. I, was, Root music. I was Roy Hightower so many years. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Root music. I got to yeah. know him through that first edition, Roy Town, out of Nashville and all over where they were playing his music. Dr. Root Music is here, yeah. and Mr. Sam Cockrell is our guest. Mr. Sam Cockrell is a bass player. The Roots plays the harmonica and the guitar. You probably play the bass mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he. He's an old Southern boy like me. So, all right, folks, here we go. Uh, now, Sam, you had something to say in the yeah. last show we were doing, so okay. give us some information right. about this <laughs> What you just said made me laugh. Yeah. I'm a musician. I play guitar, piano. Bass. I don't play drums, but I tell them what to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, people, like I said, people get the wrong idea about it. musicians. It's just like the Root Doctor. He's working on some music. He has to have some knowledge of the bass or any other thing, like me. I got to sit down on the piano because I want to be able to show you. I don't want you to be trying to figure out what's going on. If I can show it to you, if you're a competent musician, then it'll make it a lot easier. Uh, but what I wanted to say was, outside of the fact that I'm recording a new album this year, my last album, I, it's hard to believe, came out in 2015. It seemed like I just really? did it. That's four years. In the, in the, I, well, at the end of this, it'll be four years, I guess, five. Uh, and it's called Trying to Make a Living Playing My Guitar. Because mm -hmm. I know every musician in the world can relate to that title. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And for those who have persevered and continued with this business, I salute you because it's not easy. Although it looks that way, but it's not easy. I wanted to say to people who have never had an opportunity to see me in person is that, again, I was born and raised here in Chicago. Uh, I have, a, right now at this point, a six-piece band with horns. And we do, of course, blues, R&B, soul, and a, mostly original music. We don't do the typical songs you hear because you can hear that anywhere. No disrespect to that, but if you don't play who you are, you're going to always just be a cover band. And uh, in 2001, I went down to Memphis, Tennessee to compete in a competition called the IBC. Yes. We came in second place, and there have been many artists here who've been multiple times. So I, I never thought I should go back and do it again. You know, there's no shame in finishing second. We got beat by a boogie woogie player who happened to be a really great dude that I met. But, you know, people don't know you unless they get to talk to you. This is a forum for that, right? Good. Like, I, I was in a, I know you just got elected to the, the Blues Hall of Fame yes. this year, right? But, yeah. And see, I, I was a no, nominee last, year, last October. year, 2013, 2018. I went in. 20, yeah, 2013, I went in. And as uh, far as I know, you know, a lot of people don't, not, we talked about this the other day. It, it's, I'm the same guy I was the other day. But if somebody want to give you something, I'll gladly take it. But it's not nothing really rewarding financially. But it's something I never thought about as a young kid, that this is something that would happen, because I never knew that. What a root doctor, how, what, how, what's your feelings on that? Uh, Any repeat. award that you get or, you know, well, I think it's always great for people to recognize you, your work mm -hmm. as, a, as an artist. Yeah. You know? uh, so that's all, always rewarding. I've gotten a few, you know. So I think it's great, you know. It's part of the business, you know. And uh, it's a promotional tool, you know. And then also it kind of moves you up, you know, different echelons, you know. They say, well, Academy Award winner, blah, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. And they push you in a different financial bracket or whatever. You would yeah. think that would be true. And in most cases it is, but it's yeah. not. Only because of the fact that, you know this for a fact. Mm -hmm. If you're not playing on Halsted Street, which I like to call, well, I won't say that on camera. But if you're not playing down there. The Chitlin Circuit. Well, no, I'm no, going to say yeah, more. Go on, Sam. I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. Gonna, no, no, Sam, I know you I'm were, kidding. but you, you hate that, but I'm going to say more. Yeah, right, I don't want to use the word plantation, but it's a certain mentality huh. on Halston Street that I've seen over the years that still prevails today. And a lot of those guys, man, they, they, they just got older, but they never increased their pay. A lot of great players, that, that just they don't respect enough to pay them what they should be paying them to bring in them people in them clubs. And... I just, you know, I, I don't really have any desire to do it because it's not something that's going to be rewarding enough. You know, the hours at the Kingston Mine and Blues and all the places. And if you're not in Legends, you know, those are high visibility places on the south side. 
or the north side for blues players, mm -hmm. other than playing at Fitzgerald's. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are no other venues where people can see you. And if they don't see you there, then you're kind of like out of the loop in their mindset. Mm -hmm. So that's something they need to really kind of get over because you can play in a telephone booth or like the old juke joints in the south. You, they just play there because that's where great music came from. And they didn't care what the name on the building was. You just had a great place to play. But we're into labels. And that's where it kind of changes the dynamic or perception. You can see me or Root Doctor at a place off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. But if you see us at Legends, oh, man, they really into something. Yeah. They had Legends. But at the end of the day, for me, if this ain't right, I'd rather play over there if it's going to be the same uh, amount of money being distributed. Right. You know, so, I, you know, that's, that can go to another direction, which I don't want to go, but just basically musicians should be respected wherever they play. I agree with that. Now, what I want you to do, you want to play with a song? Yeah, uh -huh. we'll do one. Uh, and, and please, pardon me, some of the songs that I do on my album, if you listen to they, they're, they're, uh, there's a lot of instrumentation in it. So with that being said, I'm just going to honor a, a great artist who, who didn't get a lot of recognition, in my opinion, Junior Parker. We're going to do a song called Mother-in-Law Blues. And yeah. for all you musicians, we're in the key of D. To my little Junior Parker? Little Herman Junior Parker. That's my man. Absolutely, yeah, I know yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, in honor of my friend, you. Sir Henry Cheatham, <laughs> Blues Hall of Famer, we're going to do this song. <laughs> <laughs> I know she heard me calling. 
you got a right to wave a hand. I know she heard me calling. She looked back and waved her hand. I can hear tell her mother, that's one no good man. As I watched my baby leave, her mama held her by the hand. As I watched my baby leave, her mother held her by the hand. Look out. I did anything I had, y'all. Let's see that girl again. Well, it look like it's me and you again, man. Yeah. Ain't nothing here but us chickens. And nobody else is just chickens. <laughs> well, you know, I just My wanted to make sure that you, Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't run off and leave you, but I wanted to make sure. I said, Dad, I got these you, boys man. here. Are y'all going to play me a song? We can. What you going to play for me? Uh, give me, give me, give me, give me a, give me a, give go me a twist. Going down slow? No, I don't want to. E. What the hell is that, Ruth? Whatever you want it to be. Yeah, all right, there you go. <laughs> there you go, come on, yeah. All right. Well, I'm a Mississippi boy. I got good it. I was born in the South. Yes, I'm a Mississippi boy. A very proud Magnolia man. When I came to Chicago, Lord, I got off at Michigan in 12th Street and I thought I was in another land. <laughs> There's nothing like the summers in Mississippi. And the springs are mighty nice too. <laughs> There's nothing. Nothing like the summers in Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Now, Rip Doctor, you and Sam take this away. <laughs> do what you got want to do. <laughs> Play the blues, boy. told me something about the baseball bat I never will forget. He 
He says, son, the baseball bat got a sweet spot. And if you want to be a home run hitter, he said, you're going to have to always make contact with that sweet spot. to the plate, swinging my bat, one end skinny, the other end fat, but it makes no difference, cause it ain't the size of the bat. A sweet spot. It's so enough where it's at. Yeah. Now you may not play baseball. You may not have a bat at all. Hey, hey. But that's one thing. I want y'all to know That's a sweet spot In whatever your goal Group talk, I see you got two guitars. What the hell? What the hell is the difference? If I break a string, I just grab the other one. Uh, okay. Well, why did that one look like this one? This one would look like that one. This one is Miss Root Doctor. This is Big Mama. Oh, okay. Yeah. She got, she got a sweet sound. This, this guitar here, the L5 Gibson. I was inspired to buy this guitar because I saw Wes <coughs> Montgomery playing one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This L5 Gibson. They are uh, <clears throat> right now. They list about. <clears throat> Start about 14,000 on up. Yeah. Yeah. And this here, uh, the Firebird, uh, it's more or less if you want to do like some real sharp blues or funk, 
I you pr probably get out the firebird. But if I want to get some soft, deep, melody blues, I grab Big Mama here. Okay. And yeah, that's because that's of you. the body and all that stuff. That's what you, yeah, that you makes get the it sound rich, for you. Rich tone. Right. This basically, these guitars are made out of rosewood. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why they're so expensive. The rosewood is one of your best woods to, to, for that resonant, <laughs> that resonant sound. Say, what about yourself? Now, what about how many basses or what style of bass do you, you know, the, the upright or any of that stuff, any favorites that you have? I mean, I play the upright, but that's a bit cumbersome to carry around. And, yeah. yeah. If you're not really playing jazz or something kind of soft, it's kind of, it, what we do for right now, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But I mean, unlike uh, well, any guitar player, I'll tell you, I mean, we have several guitars. It just all depends on which one you like, and they all have different personalities. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. most of the basses uh, that I play, or, and, or guys that play this style of music, they're high definition basses where they have a lot of different colors, right? Dark, bright, because that style lends itself to electronics. Like for this particular bass, this has got the Aguilar system. Okay. Humbucker, preamp, I also use EMGs, Bartolini's, Lakeland pickups in electronics. So, uh, usually the bass way back in the day, you know, there was not a lot of definition, so it sounded a lot like this, you know, for m most guys. You really couldn't hear what he was doing, right? And then as time evolved, it got where you can actually hear the notes, and it became more defined. Same thing with the drums and hi-hats. You very rarely hear hi-hats on a record, but most guys, all of a sudden, now it's like hot sauce on chicken wings. It tastes good without it, but the hot sauce just, just enhances yeah, it. So, it. So the electronics is what really wakes up the style of, on bass playing. But you can also, again, go dark. Kind of like what, what the root doctor was saying. It has a lot of purposes depending on how you approach it. If you don't have this, then you only have what the guitar has. And for bass, this happens to be older wood. So okay. it, it, it all depends what you want. There's so many great woods for mm -hmm. reasons. Like rosewood, like this note will ring forever if this is a rosewood bass or neck until you stop it, like a piano, you know? And so I have a bass like that. But again, different applications call for different things because usually when I'm playing, I need high definition and I'm way up here. Wait, well, you can hear me. It's like you can't play up here and make mistakes that everybody's gonna hear it. So you gotta really work on that because when you up here, you can hear it. That's true. And when you're down here, you can kind of hide, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so high definition, every bass player out there knows what I'm talking about that plays that particular slapping and popping and plucking, that kind of thing. Otherwise, they were all the same. Mm -hmm. It's a tree with paint on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, what, what was the most, ex now you said 14,000, what was the uh, most expensive one? That the you most could... expensive bass that I played was uh, in 1975, an Olympic that Stanley Clark played. I, I had to have that, that was my guy. So I, I think I paid at that time, which was really expensive for me, I paid about $2,300 for that bass. Mm. And I still have it. I don't play it now because it's just hard to play. The, the, the fretboard just, it tears up my hands, but I can't part with it. Mm. You know what I mean? I could if the money's right, but like, that was my guy. You know, I, I saw him and it just blew my mind. And I said, that's what I want to oh, do. Gosh, yeah. I kind of model my style like his and then, of course, me over the years. So again, like I said, I can bring the jazz bass in. It's the same thing. It just all depends, like he said. For the sweet sounds, he uses this. For the cutting the edge funk, he uses that. Which, by the way, that's a Gibson too. You know, so yeah, it, it varies for every player, man. You know, and every reason why you have a guitar. Yeah, no, or Gibson's bass. having problems right now. I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. No, I think do. they sold. I think the company's been sold. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're talking about the wood and the tree. You know, that there's yeah. a lot of you know reasons mm -hmm. why you know yeah. these so-called. Uh, do good is one of <laughs> change everything. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I just yeah. use that term because that's what they used to call them back. The do gooders. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, you know, one thing I'll add, let Root Doctor, because he can finish it, is that like now, you know, we we've, we've known each other for for a while now, and I haven't seen mm -hmm. him before. He hadn't seen me, and when I saw him down, you took me down to the quarry. I hadn't seen him in such a long time. Yes. And so this is these, you know. You see that these relationships, you collaborate, yeah. you get back together. He's been busy doing him. I've been busy doing me, but. We talked about this off camera. I enjoy being around positive people mm -hmm. who want to make a contribution to the art and not turn yeah. it into a job. When a that guy starts looking at his watch and frowning, that's no good because that means he doesn't like what he's doing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I try not ever show that, but sometimes it's very, very hard because I don't like negativity. Mm -hmm. I would rather help you in any way that I can than say something that's going to be uh, derogatory. Okay. You have to really get to me to make me get to that level. Yeah. I have done it in the past when I was younger. <laughs> and I, I still got it in me if you push me the wrong way, but I don't want that to come out. <laughs> the Red Doctor, I understand you've done some acting. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, what have you done? What kind of acting have you done? What have you moved uh, I've done. And I want to make sure I ask you about this one particular thing, but we'll continue. Okay, I've done Brewster Plays with Oprah. I did U.S. Marshal with West Snipe, Tommy Lee Jones. That was great. That was great. Yeah. You in the swamp, that was cool. Yeah. He was in the swamp. <laughs> he was in the swamp. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was in Mobile. Like, Down go, in Tennessee. Go. <laughs> go, go, go. I did Nova King with Steve Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Poltergeist 3, I did Family Thing with James Earl Jones, Robert Duvall, mm -hmm. and a few other things. I did some early edition, <clears throat> which was a TV series. Okay. And I don't know if you ever saw that, but it came on. The guy would get up every morning and uh, get the newspaper. That's why they call it early edition. And he would get the newspaper, and, and some accident was going to happen in the future. <laughs> he would read about it. Then he would try to go and prevent it. But the people wouldn't take him serious because, right. yeah, yeah, that type of thing. So, yeah. so I did two, three episodes of that, you know. And then I did a lot of theater with Jackie Taylor at the Black Ensemble Theater. Mm -hmm. Did the Muddy Water story, Hoochie Coochie Man. Did Otis Redding story. Did Jimmy Reed, Jerry Butler. And I did Root Doctor, which was, uh, I did most of the soundtracks for, for, the, for the play, oh, okay. Root Doctor. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. See, you know what, not, not to pick up, but that's a perfect point about what we were talking about earlier off camera. See, people don't know, or well, there are people who know, but this is a great time. He's like me, and like a, he's not going to tell you he did all this stuff, except mm -hmm. for on a forum like this. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, when I think mm -hmm. about it, when you, I see me or him, anybody else like that, and people don't really know who they're dealing with. Because see, people equate money yeah. with success. Right. And I, I, and I, fame. Fame. Right, and fame. Yeah. And I had to give it to you. I, I think that's awesome. But why don't you tell people, if you can, like some of the younger music, how did you get an opportunity to be in all those movies like that? Okay, well, you know what? <clears throat> There's no rhyme or reason. Uh -huh. I never, you know, pursued acting. Uh, but, you know, Jimmy came to me one day, Jimmy Tillman, Tillman. And he had put together a documentary about Muddy Waters. And, and he was going to present it to some kids in the school but he went to Jackie Taylor to get some information about how should he go about it. Mm -hmm. So when the way he explained it to her, she said, well, <clears throat> why don't we do Muddy Water li uh, story live in theater? Mm -hmm. And so he called me, because mm -hmm. he knew that I played some Muddy Water stuff, yeah. and, and yeah. played the harmonica. Well, I got you. And he said, uh, did, did you, did, have you ever done any acting? I said, yeah, man, I, I act all the time when I'm on stage. Every you day. Know? <laughs> but <laughs> I've never done any theater or movies, you know. Mm -hmm. So he said, why don't you come out and audition uh, for the Muddy Water story? So he finally, co finally convinced me, and so I went out. And I auditioned, I guess, around 15 to 20 other people auditioned. But I got the part. Mm -hmm. so, so Jackie told me, she said, look, she said, you, you are natural on stage said, I'll take four weeks with you and get you in shape, but you, if you're willing to work hard. She said, I'm going to push you. I'm going to be hard on you. I said, hey, bring it on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, <coughs> in, in four weeks, she had me ready, really, actually. Yeah. you know. So I was nervous on that opening night. So anyway, now, Muddy was so successful, the Hoochie Coochie Man, it ran for 18 months to sell out audience. Yeah. And... So <clears throat> we did that. That was so successful. Then we did, after that, we did Otis Redding. Then we did Jimmy Reed. Then some people that came to the play that was from the Wisdom Bridge Theater, which was a union theater, which was a much larger theater. <coughs> and me. they wanted to use me in a play called In the Middle of Nowhere in the Middle of the Night. And so I had to be in the union to do the play. Mm. So. That's when I joined SAG. Okay. Screen Actors Guild. Screen Actors Guild. Mm. And also uh, after and SAG, same thing. Uh, and also Equity. Equity is a theater for, act, for theater, is a, 
Equitas Union for theater. Gotcha. So, when, when, so I went to uh, Wisdom Bridge Theater, which was in Evanston. Right. And uh, that play opened. It's a different kind of audience for, for, for that Wisdom Bridge Theater. So one night after the play, one of the characters in the play named Hollis Resnick asked me, did I know Jane Alderman? And I said, no, doesn't ring a bell. She said, well, she asked, who were you? <laughs> and she wanted to meet you. And she said, said, and she said, I suggested you meet her because she was the biggest casting director in the country. Wow. And so I went out and met her. And she said, I like what you're doing. And uh, if, uh, if something comes along, I can use you, and I'm going to give you a call. Okay. So I really didn't think too much more about <laughs> it, right? So about five or six months later, and she really, and I mean, she had people out looking for me because she wanted me for this part. And it was for Poltergeist 3, MGM. Wow. So when the guy, and, and so the guy came to my house <laughs> and knocked on my door. And so when I came to the door, and she, he said that, you roll high time? I said, yeah. Well, <laughs> said, said, oh, uh, Jane Alderman. Yeah. <laughs> said, Jane Alderman got me out here looking for you. And she wants you to come down and audition for a part uh, of Poltergeist 3. So I didn't know it was a movie. I thought it was a theater, because mm -hmm. I've been doing theater. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I w he said, no, man, this is MGM. This is like feature film. But, you know, like, when you do a film, I mean, when you do a, a feature film, yeah. Like, people think they are small part. There is no small part. Right. If you on that big screen, that's major. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Absolutely. But a lot of people say, well, you get it. So anyway, I went audition, went down to audition, I got the part. So then she, uh, she called me for the uh, U.S. Marshal. Then I did the Babe Ruth story with John Goodman. She called me for that because she you liked my work. One? Yeah, I was in that. That's not to see that movie a thousand. I got to go back I'm, and look. I'm, I'm, I'm the elevator operator. <laughs> you. And when, when I took when I took Baby Ruth up, yeah. he he didn't want to get off the elevator because he had never been on the elevator. Before. Oh, they exactly. When he went to New, when they brought him to New York, yeah. you know, Baby Ruth was like a prankster. But when they brought him to this hotel, yeah, he had never been on the elevator. Never, wow. And so and so. <laughs> And so when I would take him off, he said, oh, man, this is cool. Take me back down. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so we filmed that in Joliet. You really? Know? That's yeah. when I was filmed at? Well, my part that oh, I Oh, your did, part. You know, they do different locations, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I swear I don't want to do Henry's job, but this is interesting to me. Yeah. So, so just what I was. I'm getting ready to say, right, we got about yeah. five minutes. Okay, you know, right, so what I was really yeah. saying, like, was you able to buy some chicken, man, from all of them parents? Say that again now. I'm, just, I'm being Come joking. On, no. okay. Was you able to buy some chicken wings from all oh, of no, the parents well, of the movie? Okay, well, <laughs> a feature film uh -huh. pay you 800 a day. Wow. Plus you get some chicken. Plus, See, I didn't want him to say that, but that was my sneaky way, but that, that's plus, awesome. Plus for DM, <clears throat> which means they give you an extra $100 a day yeah, for, for, meal. for, for food and meals. For food and meal chicken. Yeah, for, for whatever, yeah. <laughs> plus they feed you wow. anyway. Now, let me look. Let me shake your head, brother. <laughs> Let me shake your head. That's that's yeah. awesome. That and is then, awesome, man. And then you get royalties. Yeah. You know, now I did <laughs> so you U.S. Marshal in 88. <laughs> now, I did put the guys in 88. So I still get royalties because yeah. wherever they show it, yeah. that's one thing about being in SAG. Yeah. That's one of the yeah. best union you can right. be in. Yeah. Because they're going to track and they're going to send mm -hmm. you your money. That's like ask having me at it. They, they, right. they're yeah. the police yeah. for your yeah. money. Yeah. 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 You get this. Yeah. They send you royalties. Let me ask you this, good Rick, because it's that time we're wrapping up mm -hmm. now. Now, this guy called commercial. That was just general. I know you're a harmonica player, you know. You, mm -hmm. you know. Did you audition for that? Why did you not get that job? Uh, did you audition you know, for that job? You know, you one, know the commercial one, I'm one, talking about with the guys? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. We, all, yeah we auditioned. One thing what about... What do you mean, we? Well, Billy Branch, a whole uh, bunch all of the harmonica players. Okay. Uh, that was in Eddie Shaw. We all... Uh, <laughs> Go get this what, chicken. What's the guy named where the cat kept uh, the harmonica player? <laughs> Uh, where the cap sideways. Sugar Blue. Sugar Blue, all, they all are this. But one thing I learned about in the movie business, it, it's not so much about how good you are. You got to be what they're looking for. Right. That look, you right. got to have the look yeah. right. in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and so actually, so and when I looked at, the, when I saw the guy that actually got the part, he, he, he couldn't play half the harmonica, the guy that, Audition, right? But he was 
probably he was what they was looking for. Yeah. You know, he looked like he was a more sophisticated guy. Was he black? Guy. Was he a black guy? Yeah, yeah he was uh, a black yeah. guy. But he looked like he may have been a little bit more, you know, because yeah. he had on a dress shirt. Look, yeah. yeah. And, and I think he died shortly after that. Wow. Uh -huh. I think he died a few months wow. after he. Uh -huh. Yeah. But anyway, he he you know got the part. But I found that when I would go to audition, I've auditioned for hundreds of movies, but I go in, I read my part, and go home. If they call me, good. If they don't, so good. that that I pipe, so that pipeline is still open. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing, man. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and so I never really pursued it. It just fell into my your lap, yeah. Right. Okay. And there's no, like I say, you you can't tell a person how because when I was doing uh, the Muddy Water story, and and they had guys in the play who had went to acting school at Columbia and all that. Yeah. They couldn't understand a guy coming in had no Experience. training, right. you know, no drama, right. get the leading role. They call it a natural, man. You right. Know, sure. and so people it, way, yeah. But, but it's, if, if you fit, if you're what they're looking for, and see, one thing is, is that they could act, but they couldn't sing. Yeah. Or either they couldn't play the oh, guitar. Okay. They, oh, could, they yeah. couldn't fit, they couldn't yeah. be so, so you had to actually play? Yeah, I had to play the guitar. Okay. And, and, right. and I'm trying to muddy water. But I'm just saying, but that was part of the, the gig. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, was that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, because uh, Muddy was a guitar player. Yeah. yeah. And so they had to get me a guitar just like the one he played, you know. Mm -hmm. so, Telecaster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the guy that played Cotton, he was a harmonica player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, Hollywood's so phony, though. I was just surprised they really wanted somebody to get played, though. But, well, you'd be surprised no, this, now. No, no, this Something was, you need no, no, for the stage, this, right? Th this was a stage yeah. this okay. was live live okay no 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 you had to play you had to be well, that's like right now what we do yeah. you, right. you can't fake right. it okay yeah. tell you what guys i'll tell you what now I'll tell you what we're gonna get back you coming back real dog when you come back yeah no, don't give me no yeah. jive now because i know you're a big shot look, you know you you're call me look if you come because i mean here's one thing about me that's kind of different from a lot of people yeah is that i'm in music to communicate to people to cook you know Co you know, cooperate, cultivate, meet, yeah, cultivate. Yeah. meet cultivate. people, yeah, yeah, got you. Uh, deliver a message, make new friends, travel all over the world. In every country I go in, I'm interested in, interested in their culture, their way of life, mm -hmm. yeah. their language, yeah. and that's what that's what it's all about. That's all right. what music is about. What you guys say? Give me, give me, give me a going home song. About three minutes, and we're out of oh, here. Yeah. Okay. All right. What you gonna do? You gonna do something? And I see, cause you know, doctor, something I was gonna tell you. You know, I want you guys. Really, I want you guys. And also, you don't forget to come to the radio stations. I always, now you right. got to pay the power course now. Yeah. You know, you got to pay now. You got to yeah. come down there. But anyway, Let, we, we, I'll do a little bit of a. Wh why not? Okay, a slow blues and a. Whatever you want to do. It okay, in. squeeze the lemon. me like a lemon and let my juice flow like rain yeah, you squeeze me like a lemon mama what I'm gonna do now is just shoot, shoot them. and let my juice flow like rain I got a lot of cats down on the edge of Not too much, but I just got that. I want you to call me sweet daddy. I just wanna hear you call my name. If you squeeze the lemon right, you got you some lemonade on the way. Yeah, if you squeeze the lemon right, mama. You got you some lemonade on the way. You won't ever have to thirst. I'll be your lemonade night and day. Oh! 
Squeeze me. Squeeze me. Squeeze me and squeeze me and squeeze me and squeeze me and tag me in your own baby. Squeeze your daddy till I feel all right. Yes, I want the world to know. Go on. Yes, I want the world to know. I'm a big fat lemon. I want you to tell everybody the lemon is in town. I'm full of juice and I'm ran the clown. Tell all the big black women, tell all the big black women with the great big round everything. Squeeze the lemon all night long, baby. again real soon someday thank you sam thank you Bruce nice Bruce. nice working with you you too my man <laughs> <laughs> and we got a show coming up at the at the at the at the, at the blues fest june the 8th we're gonna be on one of them stages sam and i doing what we do playing these blues and funk Hey, better show me. Hey, look, don't forget to go to social media and buy all of my albums. Sam Cockrell and the Root Doctors got some oh, albums yeah. to show you right there. You want to show them to they right here, man, on the table. Yeah. Yeah, go to social media, okay. Sam Cockrell. Go to Google and you yeah. get all my stuff. And you can find my product on all on Spotify, iTunes, on all of the internet outlets. Check it out. Go to Dr. Root Music or Roy Hot Dama. We'd be glad to accommodate you. Yeah. Sound mm -hmm. like a plan. Yeah. Sound like a plan. Make sure you go buy some because the proceeds go for a very worthy cause. Help keep me from stealing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it actually, it, no, it actually helps us keep you from working. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. <laughs>